This is the first set of notes on genetics. Uh, this is covered in chapter 9 in your textbook. And uh, one thing that you should probably write down is that genetics, by definition, is the study of heredity. So we start off talking about Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel was an, a monk in Austria. He was actually born in Austria, and I believe his monastery was in Germany. Um, and he was working in the mid-1800s. Uh, studying the genetics of garden peas. <clears throat> now when Mendel was doing his work he didn't know anything about meiosis, he didn't know about genes, he didn't know about DNA. He was just looking at the traits uh, that he got when he made different crosses between different kinds of uh, different varieties of pea plants. Uh, peas in general are what we call true breeding. That means they self-pollinate. Um, they uh, the way their flowers are put together, they usually pollinate themselves, and by pollinating themselves, they produce ad identical offspring, and that's called true breeding. And so he tried crossing different different varieties of pea plants with different characteristics, and kept careful records, counted thousands and thousands of peas and flowers and plants, and over the course of of his career, learned a great deal about what happens when you cross uh, various factors with each other. So here's what he did. He was working with pea plants once again. Uh, we have flowers here. This is where the, the reproductive organs are located inside the flower. The um, stamens produce pollen, and those are the male parts of the flower. And the carpel, or the pistil, is the female part of the flower that becomes the seeds and the fruit. And so what he did was he had uh, naturally occurring or tree breeding purple flowered pea plants and others that were white. And so he said, I wonder what would happen if I took pollen from the white flower and transferred it to the purple flower. So he cut off the stamens from the uh, purple flowered plant and used a paintbrush to transfer pollen to the, to the carpel of the purple flower. And then he let the, um, the plant grow and um, mature into a pea pod. And then he planted the peas from that pod and let them grow into plants. And then when they, when they grew and made flowers, that first generation of offspring, he found that all of the flowers were now purple. So that made him think that there's something about purple that was stronger or um, that covered up the white, okay? <clears throat> so this is, this is pollination and this is the first cross that he did. Now what we know now is that we have different alleles for genes. Gene is the sequence of DNA that codes for a protein and alleles, uh, the, the protein produces some kind of trait, and the alleles are the different forms of the gene. So in the case of the flower color, we've got purple flowers, a, a purple flower allele, and a white flower allele, okay? The genes are located on homologous chromosomes. We get two separate chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. And um, they're lo the, the allele for flower color is in the same location on those chromosomes, but they're different. In this case, we've got one, the purple one from the mom and the, and the white one from the dad. So what happens to homologous chromosomes in meiosis? Remember, meiosis separates um, cells into, it starts off with a diploid cell, and you end up with four haploid daughter cells. It cuts the chromosome number in half by separating those homologous chromosomes. So what happens to the genes on those chromosomes? Well, as the gene pairs are separated, um, they're separated because they're located on homologous chromosomes, and they, the gametes then, the sperm cells and egg cells, are going to carry only one gene of each homologous pair of genes. And so when you cross the sperm cell and egg cell together, then the offspring that is produced will have t the two homologous genes there for that, for that trait. So we talk about genotype and phenotype. The genotype is what the, the letters that represent the genes, okay? And so here we have a genotype of the offspring from that first cross that has one dominant capital P from mom for purple flowers and one lowercase p for uh, white flowers from the dad. The phenotype is the appearance or the expression of the trait, whatever the trait is. In this case, it's purple flowers. And so it, this, this individual would have a genotype of big P, little p, and a phenotype of purple. Uh, a cross is when you, when you take the traits or the, the, the um, gametes from two different parents and put them together. Okay? Each parent originally has two different gene, who, two genes for a trait. In the parent generation, this one had two dominant big P's for purple flowers. This one had two recessive little P's for white flowers. Okay? And then in production of gametes, each of those parents is going to contribute one of the two genes to the offspring. And so in this case, we have all of our plants had purple flowers from this cross, and that they had a dominant gene from the, from the purple flower and a recessive gene from the white flower. 
we use something called a Punnett square to predict what's going to happen with a cross. Okay, so the the parent generation, we're going to have the parents cross. This is original parent generation. Okay, the true breeding purple flower with the true breeding white flower, and we're going to represent the alleles. <coughs> by the letters here, and we're going to separate those alleles by meiosis, and we're going to show on the Punnett square the two alleles from one of the parents and the other two alleles from the other parent. And the, each box in the Punnett square is going to, is going to contain two alleles, the, one from each parent. Okay, So we'll see in this case that all of the offspring are going to have big P, little p because they get the big P from one parent and the little P from the other. Now something I want to point out to you, okay, that Punnett squares are a probability, they're not a promise. What this says is that every time you cross any gamete from this parent with any gamete from this parent, you're going to get offspring that have this particular genotype, the, the heterozygous genotype. The letters on the outside are going to represent the gametes that can be produced by the parent. The letters on the inside are going to be the probabilities or the possibilities of what can happen when gametes from that parent are com those parents are combined. It's a probability, it's not a promise. Now this time it is a promise because all of the offspring are going to have purple flowers. But a lot of times you can't tell, <coughs> you don't know what the outcome is going to be when there are different outcomes. But you have a probability of, of one chance out of four or three chances out of four that it's going to be this way or that way. So when Mendel let his first generation cross, when, when he let them self-pollinate uh, and planted the seeds for the next generation, he got about a thousand about a thousand plants that it grew out of this and what he found was the next generation the white flowers showed up again. About three-fourths of all the plants that grew from those peas had purple flowers but about one-fourth had the white flowers so that let him know that that, that that factor, that gene, that allele that caused the white flowers didn't disappear it was only hidden behind the dominant purple. So here we have, this is going to show that cross that he got from the, from the second generation, uh, from crossing the first generation. We're going to put the alleles on the outside, the gametes on the outside, and the offsprings cross on the inside. Okay, Vocabulary terms you need to know. These are really important. A trait is what we call a characteristic, like tall or short, red flowers white, could be brown eyes, blue eyes, brown hair. Blue, uh, blonde hair and so forth. All of those different characteristics. Homozygous is when you have two alleles that are the same. Homo means the same and so whenever you have a word that has that homo part in it you know that it means the same something. Heterozygous has different alleles as in the hybrid. Hetero means different so the hetero part is going to mean that something is different there. <coughs> the genotype is the letters that represent the alleles. Two big T's, a big T, little t, two little t's. And the phenotype is the expression of the trait, whether it's tall or short, purple flowers or white. All right, so we're going to cross that first generation, self-pollinate that first generation here, okay? The alleles that are possible are big P and little p from each parent. And so we're going to make a Punnett square and show the cross and talk about the genotypes, phenotypes of the offspring and what ratio they would probably appear in. So here's our Punnett square, okay? We've got our gametes from each parent on the outside of the Punnett square. And when we cross it, we end up with something like this. Now one thing I want to point out to you is you always put where whichever depending doesn't matter where the different letters are, <coughs> but you always in the offspring you always put the capital letters first. So <coughs> we have one that has a big P, big P, two of them have a big P, little P, heterozygous, and one is little P, little P. So the, the genotypes are homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. That means if you can see the offspring and you produce a lot of offspring, generally speaking, about one-fourth of them would be homozygous dominant, about half of them would be heterozygous, and about one-fourth would be homozygous recessive. On the phenotype, we have two different phenotypes that we can have. We have purple or we can have white. If there is a big P present in the genotype, there plant will be purple or the flowers will be purple and so the phenotypes would be about three-fourths would be purple and about one-fourth would be white and that's what what Mendel found in his first cross that he did his second cross that he did. So here's just another uh, representation of that okay we've got one-fourth that are homozygous dominant that are purple, two-fourths or one-half that are heterozygous they would also be purple, one-fourth homozygous recessive they would be white and so the ratio here of genotypes in that first, in that monohybrid cross, 
is 1 to 2 to 1, homozygous, heterozygous, homozygous, recessive. And then uh, the phenotypes would be 3 to 1, 3 purple to 1 white. Mendel came up with a number of different principles, and we still use his principles today, although we know a little bit more about them than he did, because he didn't know about meiosis, and he didn't know about uh, chromosomes or genes or DNA. And so, uh, but we still use those. We just change the terminology that he used to, to represent what we already understand. So one of, the, one of the important principles that he came up with is the principle of segregation. And this states that egg cells or sperm cells will carry only one allele of the two alleles. And those two alleles will separate or segregate from each other during meiosis. Again, he didn't know about meiosis, but he said that the alleles will separate from each other. <coughs> the second principle here is the principle of independent assortment. And what that says is that each pair of alleles separates independently of other pairs of alleles. They're not, they're in, the inheritance of one characteristic is not influenced by the inheritance of another one. Um, he studied seven different characteristics of pea plants. Flower color, flower position, seed color, seed coat, uh, pod color, height, location of the flowers, and so forth. And, uh, and what he found was that the inheritance of one characteristic, like flower color did not influence the inheritance of the seed color. It was a totally separate thing and that's what independent assortment means. This is a diagram that just represents the segregation. This should show that the uh, gametes are going to be separated, the alleles will be separated in the gametes, but when they recombine then uh, you'll end up with a, with a two um, alleles in the offspring. And in, in independent assortment, each pair of alleles is independent of each other, just like every time you flip a coin, you have a 50-50 chance of getting heads. This concludes the first set of notes on genetics.